This is a very common little light on eBay, and it's referred to as a 16 LED selfie light. And I bought one of these a while back, and then I was thinking, well, I've not taken a look at it yet. I wonder if they've changed, so I bought another one to actually compare them. And then Michal sent one as his package from Poland, so I think it'd be a good idea to take them all to bits. Now, the idea here is, well, certainly for this one, that you've got an on-off switch and it lights up, and then you've got three settings at the side, uh, a switch at the side that chooses low, medium, and high. And I believe that these are supposed to have functionality. It's not that clear uh, that they may actually be able to be controlled via the jack as well. I don't know if that requires, it probably does require an app, and I'm always very wary of downloading apps. But uh, let's open, well, let's take them all out and see what they look like for a start. Are they all identical? Ooh, this one feels kind of rubberier for some reason. It's a stickier plastic. Interesting, it's got printing in the back. Um, same sort of functionality. Uh, and this one... Um, okay, first notable difference is that it, the jack plug isn't a four pin jack plug, it's got the... the microphone position is just shunted out. Um, switch at the side, low, medium, oh, bit flickery, low, medium, and high. So pretty much the same functionality. Okay, let's open them. Let's start with this one. Uh, I'll zoom in for this because it is quite small, but I won't zoom in too far. So I presume this can spudge open. I'm going to have to be careful here because uh, another thing, they I think they all have the rechargeable. Yes, they all. They're all micro USB rechargeable. So they've got a lithium cell inside them. I'm not sure what the capacity is. These things are cheap. You know, some of these items, it's almost worth buying them just for the lithium cell inside. Ooh, quite a complex circuit board. Ah, I need a screwdriver. Screwdriver bit. Do I have any tiny screwdriver bits? I think we've got a tiny screwdriver bit over there. Or tinier than this one. Is that going to fit? No. Oh, bugger. Not to worry. I shall improvise. I'll grab the other screwdriver set. It's one of those very sharp little uh, screws that requires the extremely narrow blades. This might do the trick. That has done the trick. Is that all it's required? So there's the little, little, little lithium. There's the little lithium cell. Uh, hold on, I'm just going to get my my zoom glasses on for this. It's rated 0.4 watt hour. Well, I kind of prefer things in milliamp hour, but that's okay. Does it have protection on the cell itself? No, it doesn't. Uh, but it does have what looks like the protection chips on here. So there's a, one of the switches. There's the little on-off switch. The rest of the circuitry, to all intents and purposes, this looks like a little boost circuit. Um, the switch has resistors that's switching between the look of it. Low value resistors, they probably are just directly in line. So why would it have an inductor then? Is it stepping the voltage up? Must be. Maybe it's uh, stepping up to about 5 volts to drive the LEDs. And the rest of the circuitry, I mean, it's just a few discrete components here. To all intents and purposes, it looks as though it's mainly for driving the... for charging the battery more than anything else. Okay, I shall investigate those afterwards. Let's take a look at the other ones and see how they compare. You just said something. I didn't hear what it was. I did say something, Google, but thank you for asking anyway. I sometimes uh, forget that I've got OK Google on and OK Google kind of... Uh, Occasionally picks up those random sounds that it makes, uh, it sounds like I've asked a question. This one uh, is kind of stuck in a wee bit better, in the sense that I don't see screws. 
What's holding this in? I think I may have to prise this out a little bit. Let's apply gentle pressure. Ooh. Oh no, I see a screw. Uh -oh. Let's take the screw out. That'd be a really good idea. I'm just mixing all these bits up, haven't I? Yes, I am. Okay, I'll work out later. Oh, bigger battery in this one. Uh, which was this one? This one is the one that came in this packet, the newest one, and it looks as though it's got a bigger cell. Although the cell is thinner. Uh, there's the multi intensity selector switch. There's the resistor surrounding it. It's pretty much the same circuitry. There is. It looks like a small filter circuit over here that I'm wondering if it's got a facility that if it detects a tone in the audio channel, I'm going to have to test that out. There is, it does look like there is, is tracks leading up to that. It may have the facility to turn out that transistor on perhaps when it detects an audio tone out of this. I wonder if it's a very specific tone or if it would respond to just audio. I shall try that as well. And that leaves this one, which is the one that Michal sent from Poland. Is it going to be similar to one of the others? No. Is, is that a different style again? It is. They're all different. That's intriguing. If someone has a good idea, everybody copies it. So what do we have? The lithium cell is actually kind of in the back of this one. The newer ones seem to have bigger cells. This also has a jolly big cell. With the protection on the circuit board again, I take it the protection for that one was on the circuit board as well. Yes, it is. Uh, micro USB, I'm noting that uh, two pins of the micro USB are shunted at this end with separate tracks, not just blobbed together. I wonder if that's one of those ID bits or something, or if it's a, a data pin, not quite sure. Um, much simpler circuitry in this one. The three resistors, as is t typical. I guess that maybe this circuitry around here might be associated with detecting audio input. There are uh, tracks going onto these, so it must detect a sort of shunt of a uh, sort of audio input level on that. But is it? programmed to respond, is it designed to respond only to a specific high frequency or is it going to be actually like audio activated? Let's uh, let's stick this actually into a phone that's playing a video or something like that. So let's, uh, there's Jerry's, one of Jerry bullshit corner videos. So let's uh, start that playing. One of them being. Is it going to actually activate the lights at all? No, I think it is just, uh, I think it may require a specific tone, if that. Okay. So I'm going to uh, analyse these. I'm going to take uh, some uh, notes about what the chips are that are being used and uh, I'll be back in a moment. So one moment, please. So one surprisingly time-consuming reverse engineering later, I do have it flashing now I understand the circuitry and realise that there's no subtlety to this. It really is just a loud tone and that has to be really pretty much, you know, rammed up to maximum volume. I've got some music playing here set up to maximum volume and that's what's making the LEDs flash. So it's obvious that when you download the dubious app that they supply, all it does is that when the camera flashes to be triggered, it just puts out a very loud tone. Now, the first circuit board, the original one, is actually quite complicated. The other ones are all very clearly clones of that, but they've just stripped it back. They've removed a couple of expensive components. The first one is this component here. It's a little audio coupling transformer. 
Uh, that would have been. That seems quite complex. I wonder if they were just trying to boost the signal up to make it easier to detect. Or they were just trying to emulate the impedance of a, a proper set of headphones plugged into it. The other component that's odd in this one is a 5350A, which I'm not sure what it is. I can make a guess. If you type 5350A into Google, you get a very common amplifier. Um, I couldn't find this chip at all. But from the fact that uh, it's a 5-pin chip and two connections to that side are to the, uh, the circuit ground, and the battery negative is over at this side of the capacitor in the vicinity, I would say it's probably an undervoltage cutoff chip. All of them use the same charge chip, which is an LTH7, which is the classic 4054. It's the absolutely standard charging uh, chip, which basically has the programming pin for setting the charge current, ground, battery, and the positive, and then a charge output just to show it's charging. That in this case, and well, in all the cases of these, is connected to a small LED just tucked into the display. Uh, here's the LED down there. And there, all the same place. It is very much a clone, and there. And they light very dimly, those LEDs. They're very low current. Um, other notable features. Let's take a look at the circuit diagram. Because I have reverse engineered it. The audio comes in, and this is the main ones, the two that don't have the audio transformer look like this. They've got a 33 ohm resistor to emulate the um, earpiece. And then they've got a capacitor, not sure what the value is, couldn't really measure it in circuit. And it's driving straight to a transistor base. The transistor base is biased very slightly on by a 1 mega ohm resistor, but also pulled to uh, the negative rail by a 100k resistor. And basically speaking, what that means is that when there's a high-level audio signal, it will turn this transistor on. When it does turn the transistor on, uh, that um, turns this MOSFET on. The MOSFET uh, is normally held off by this 100k resistor. When the transistor pulls on, it pulls it down to the negative rail, turns the P-channel MOSFET on. It is the same MOSFET used in all of them, A1, S, H, B. And that bypasses the switch mechanism um, and brings the LEDs on directly via the, sort of the highest current resistor here. So, And in one of the cases, it uses a diode. The other two, it doesn't. The If you want to switch the LEDs on manually, you flick that switch there, and then the that immediately puts a 22 ohm resistor between the positive rail and the LEDs to bring them to the lowest setting. Then you've got another option that if the if you slide the intensity switch, it switches another 22 ohm resistor in parallel. Slide it again, it puts a 2.7 ohm resistor in parallel with that. And the currents that it came up with were 43 milliamp, 80 milliamp, and 235 milliamp, which don't just represent the resistors. They also represent the fact that the increased current is probably causing the voltage from the battery to drop a bit because it is quite a high current. Anything else worth mentioning about this? Not really. Okay. So let's take a look at the other units, the uh, close-up of them. That's the first one. That's the original with the extra components. Then comes this uh, one with the round circuit board. I think, was this a... I can't remember who, which was which. Um, but this one has the charge chip. No over-discharge protection. It's got the three resistors in a row. 2.7 ohm, uh, 22 ohm, 22 ohm. And it's got... The circuit is the neatest of the lot. It's got the circuitry over here for detecting the uh, audio. Um, that's the NPN transistor. That's the P-channel MOSFET that actually turns the LEDs on. And it's got the diode over here, which uh, goes to the switch to bypass the switch. But uh, the other ones, I say, don't have that. The final circuit, the squarish one, has the charge circuit. Um, it's quite uncluttered, really. It's got the audio input, some of the filtering on this side, um, and then it's got the J3 transistor there coupling over to the uh, MOSFET that brings the LEDs on. And the LEDs are all in parallel. It's a mixture. If you look at the LEDs, you see there's the warm white and cold white. I think the reason they've done that is to... Um, basically give it a richer colour, either to get an intermediate colour or to make it look like one of the programmable, um, sort of like the film, the 
photography industry LED panels that you can choose between the color temperature. It may be for, to give it the appearance of that, or it could be to get an intermediate color of white, or it could be to give the richer color spectrum that uh, the two different phosphors will give. So it's an interesting little thing. As I say, I don't particularly wish to download the app to try that, but I'm guessing it just does put out the tone. Uh, I looked up some videos on YouTube and there was a guy who was demonstrating and he downloads the app and then he's like trying to flick switches on the, on the screen, nothing's happening and then it doesn't work. And yeah, I'm not so sure about that. But uh, yeah, interesting little things. They're just on their own. They're, they're really cheap. Uh, just on their own, they make quite a useful little uh, sort of emergency light, I suppose, because uh, USB chargeable and you can just uh, use them at different intensity settings with differing battery lifespans. But they're quite neat and they do work for the intended purpose, just as an extra light on your camera. So yes, um, these ones go under the name 16 LED Selfie Light. So quite smart little units.